My name is Tanvi Hans, and I am essentially known as a footballer. Um, today's theme, which is Alchemy of Transformation, is actually going to allow me to deep dive into what I am beyond the field as well. I've always, um, not always, but for many years, I've had this tagline for myself that I'm more than a footballer. So finally, I'm going to get to explore it today with you guys. All right. I want to start today's speech on a very honest note. At 8 o'clock last night, I didn't have my speech ready. Um, the TEDx team was chasing me uh, for my speech, and I had sent them a basic outline that I wasn't entirely happy with and convinced with myself. So at about 8 o'clock last night, I sat down. I hadn't eaten, um, so I grabbed myself a Snickers bar, and I was just thinking about what I can say to this room of already very intelligent people um, who have access to technology, have access to YouTube, social media, like the previous speaker said. We have access to so much education and information now. What can I say that hasn't already been said? Everybody knows the basic formulas to success. So hopefully I'll be able to cover that today. There are a few things that we already know. Everybody knows that you obviously start with a passion, an intent, a dream, a desire. That's the starting point. And the non-negotiable in all of that is the hard work. You cannot, you cannot replace that. If you want to make any strides in your industry, in your field, you have to work hard. That's a non-negotiable. And I feel like everybody knows that. There's so much information, so many life experiences that the best of the best have shared again on social media and all these platforms, so we know these basic formulas. So what can I say that's different today, that perhaps the other speakers today haven't already said, and that we don't have at our fingertips on Google or on YouTube? Hopefully you guys know who this is. This is Kobe Bryant. He's a, he was a giant in basketball. I really admire him. Super wise, had a fantastic career, left us too early. But his wisdom still stays with us. People still circulate his videos and his interviews and things. So I came across one of his interviews, and he was asked, what is the one thing that the greats have in common? And he simply said, love. We love what we do. So that makes so much sense if you just break it down. If you really strip it down, it really comes down to the stripped down core, hardcore version of why you started. And that's what will keep you consistent. That's what will help you overcome the critics. That's what will help you overcome the mountains, go through the lows, the injuries, everything. It's the, it's the love, the stripped down passion for why you started. And not only will it help you stay consistent, but the, con the continuous access, I think what separates the good people the greats is the fact that you have that ready access to that feeling of joy anytime even when it's hard you have that access and if you're able to achieve that that sort of accessibility that feeling that joy at any point in time it doesn't matter what you're going through you're just enjoying the process so much that no one can phase you the outcome will not phase you critics will not phase you the mountains will not phase you this might be something a lot of you already know as well. Of course, you have to have intent, you have to work hard, you have to love what you do. So what can I say really that's different, that you can take away different today? It is really the fact that each one of you, even if there are twins in the room, you're different from each other. You are given qualities, characteristics, abilities, interests that is different from the person next to you. And those are actually the tools that you've been gifted with to make the change that you need to in your industry and really fulfill the dream that you have for yourself using those unique tools and making your unique mark in this world. I think the best way that I can probably explain this is by actually going into my journey and how I've used the various things that make me who I am, not just as a footballer, but beyond that as well. Of course, everyone knows me for my football, 
and we will speak about that of course. But people know me again because I played for clubs like Tottenham Ladies and Fulham Ladies which are well known. But even that happened because of very unique circumstances to me. In 2009, I was called for the under-19 India team camp and I was successful through a whole month um, of trials, did pretty well, pretty confident I would have made it to the team, but unfortunately at the end of that month, they told me that Tan, you can't actually go on to play for India because you have a foreign citizenship. So I'm Indian in every way. I was born in Punjab, brought up in Delhi, have Indian parents, but my mom was born in England. So just as minors, my brother and I, we opted for the British citizenship, not knowing that someday I might have the caliber to play for India and this might become a bit of a hindrance. So I wasn't off put by the fact that I couldn't play for India because of my citizenship. In fact, I tried to use it to my advantage. Again, this situation was unique to me. I wanted to do my masters in England, which I did. I played for the university team there, loved the football, the infrastructure, the coaching, that was fantastic, better than anything I'd experienced in India. So it was a no-brainer. I knew that I couldn't go on to play for India, so why don't I work really hard and give trials for some of the well-known clubs in London, and that's what I did. When I came back for my masters, I approached my coach and we trained morning and night. I had no social life. I basically trained with one intent that I want to be able to play in London for these clubs and I gave trials um, I think in July of 2013 and fortunately two out of the three clubs liked me and then Tottenham happened and then Fulham happened and then I came back to India again very consciously. But again, all that happened and the reason why I'm on the stage today is because of my unique circumstances and I took advantage of it. The other one, within the football sphere again, is that when I finally came back to India, I moved to Bangalore in 2017. And at that time, uh, I hold an OCI card, but I couldn't play for the state even. At that time, they had not announced that OCI card holders can play for the state. So, just because I love football so much, I couldn't step away from it. I played for a men's team in what, what is known as the amateur league. And uh, because I coached a few of the boys as well, I ended up captaining them. Now this became news. It became news, first girl to play for a men's team, captain a men's team. And the truth is, I did not do it with that, that intention at all. It was just that I wanted to play. I love it so much. And I stuck to it. I look for, I look for the option to play. And that's kind of how it happened. All right, moving beyond football. Okay, you guys can Google me. There's a lot on football. Let's speak about beyond the football field and what else really makes up who I am. I've, I come from a fairly well-off background. I'm well-educated. I speak fluently. Um, I think I'm fairly presentable. Um, and I'm also very confident on camera, confident on stage. So I really have utilized all these little qualities of mine as well to get out there because the truth is that there aren't too many women out there that are really representing sport right now, especially in India. And I've had the opportunity to be a sports presenter. I will continue to have those opportunities. Um, I get to give talks like this and inspire people. Um, I've done modeling. I've also done a little bit of acting. God knows if I'll continue to ever, but um, I have done all those things. And it's put myself out there as not just a footballer, but a personality. Now, where does all this add up? I'm also creative, so um, there's a lot of creativity uh, in social media and stuff, and I really enjoy that as well, but I'll cover that in a bit. Um, beyond being a footballer, obviously everyone enjoys, uh, not enjoys, but is encouraged to study as well. And the truth is that besides being sporty and enjoying football, I actually always enjoyed entrepreneurship. And in my high school, undergrad, and my master's, I did entrepreneurship. What ended up happening was, when I moved to Bangalore, there was a passion project that fell into the lap of my business partner and myself, uh, Shweta and myself over there. I'm a footballer, she's a fitness instructor, and one of our friends, one of our girlfriends basically said that please teach me and a few of my girlfriends how to play football. And these are women in their mid-30s, late-30s, um, who either had never played sport before or are playing it after many years. 
So obviously Shweta and I weren't sure what to do. Should we, should we actually go ahead and book a ground or what? And we did. We booked a small five-side ground at the end of 2017, this was. 17 women turned up for that very first session of football. And they enjoyed the session so much that they came back to us and said, do this for us every weekend. And in another year, year and a half of just doing that one football session for these women, the community just kept growing and kept growing and kept growing. And in a year and a half, two years, we were a few hundred women strong. And Shweta and I sat down and we said, listen, there is a gap in the market there that we are catering to and nobody else is. I don't know if you noticed, but women tend to drop out of sport after school and college. And we're catering to those women. So we decided to incorporate ourselves. Sisters in Sweat is incorporated. And we decided to go into multiple sports and not just look after sports, but they look after the well-being and the wellness of the women um, through sport, but also through social activities. We do off-site trips, but it's all exclusively for women. Now, why I'm telling you this is because my entrepreneurship really came into the picture here. And so did my creativity. When pandemic hit, we were a physical community of women that were basically did sessions and events only in Bangalore. But the pandemic forced us to go online. And we started doing sessions of different formats online, yoga, you know, the usual dance and things like that. And I was handling the social media. Besides actually playing football, I was handling social media for Sisters in Sweat and, of course, my own social media. And I enjoyed it. I actually enjoy creativity. And it helped us reach women outside of Bangalore. And today, we're over 5,000 women pan-India. And we hope to be present pan-India physically as well. And that's really a combination of the creativity, entrepreneurship, and, of course, the vision as well. Sisters in Sweat has been such a passion project and fantastic. We have had women come up to us and tell us that, you know, you have, I was the backbencher uh, at all the PE sessions. I never wanted to play sport, but today I'm wearing a jersey and I'm representing a football team of girls. There have been women who've told us that their child has grown respect for them, for their, their husband has grown respect for them, that their lives have changed because sport has been reintroduced to them. And just having a community of women has been fantastic for them. And to be able to enable that is really fantastic. All right. So putting all of this together with Sisters in Sweat, which is my biggest project, my biggest baby right now, of course, apart from playing, and my uh, comfort on camera, on stage, uh, obviously my football career as well, my creativity, combining all of that together, I think I managed to create a role model that I never had. When I was 12 years old and I wanted to play football and I wanted to take up a career in football, I had no female footballer to look up to. Not even the ones in the West were covered in our news. Today, the girls in India who are coming up now, they do look up to me and me putting myself out there through all these different avenues definitely makes me accessible and really makes me the person that I didn't have growing up. So I really feel in a very radical way that transformation of history has happened and I'm happy to be able to take that position and I'm not taking it lightly. Finally, I think the only thing that I would say that I would like you to take away that's different from all the information that's out there is that you've been gifted with unique tools, unique characteristics, abilities, and you have been gifted that so you can leave your unique impression on this planet long after you've left. How deep that impression is going to be, how broad and impactful that impression is going to be, really depends on you and how much you actually work at your skills and sharpening your skills and work hard. Of course, all those things are non-negotiable. I'll give one small metaphor. Hopefully, it won't fall flat on its face. It's a football metaphor. Uh, hopefully, everybody here knows who Messi and Ronaldo is, even if you don't follow football. Um, so if I was to pass, in a game situation, if I was to pass the football to Messi and Ronaldo in the exact same way, the way that they would receive the ball would be different. Messi is left-footed, Ronaldo is right-footed. They also have very different skill sets, very different mentalities. The way that they receive that ball, the next decision they make, the next move they make will impact the game differently and the outcome differently because they are different people. The outcome, eventually, is to get those three points and then obviously to score, but it will impact differently. 
to use your uniqueness. There's no one right path. You have the tools all within you. Don't forget to enjoy it. And yeah, just be more of yourself. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you.